Amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we bless the Lord for tonight. Um, I pray that as we have come together, the Lord will truly do something special and unforgettable in our lives in Jesus' name. Um, I pray that our continual coming, you know, the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You know, God does not, He, he, he does not scam people, you know. You know, whenever God tells you to come, there's always something, there's always a reward that awaits those who faithfully obey Him. I know, you know, it's not convenient for some of us to be here, but it's just a sacrifice, and God honors sacrifices, you know, and I just pray that the Lord will reward us indeed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage us, as always, please let's pay rapt attention as the teaching of the word, you know, proceeds for the word of God is an instrument of deliverance, is an instrument of liberation, is a major weapon that God uses to set his children free. And the Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. It says because of that, they walk on in darkness. When a people do not have knowledge, the, the, the resultant effect is that they walk in darkness. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If any man follows me, he will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I pray that the Lord will help us tonight in Jesus' name. Um, last week, we looked at a very important teaching uh, preparing for your season of manifestation. If you were not here last week, please, I want to encourage you. Go to our YouTube channel. I uploaded the teaching today. So please do well to listen to that teaching. And even if you were here, still listen to it again and again. The Word of God is ever fresh. And that teaching is very, very, very important. Very critical and cardinal for anybody who fulfill purpose and destiny. And I just pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Tonight we are going to another very, very powerful teaching that I believe um, is critical for every believer that will not only please God, but will live a purpose-driven life. And I just want to encourage us again, let's pay right attention, eliminate anything that can distract you, and make sure your, your attention is fully on the word of God tonight. The title of tonight's teaching is Paying the Price for a Glorious Destiny. Paying the Price for a Glorious Destiny. Let's look at the book of John chapter 9. <clears throat> the book of John chapter 9. John chapter 9. I'll read from verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read NLT for better understanding. It says, And Jesus was walking along, and he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, Why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming, and then no one can work. But while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the man's blind, blind eyes, and told him, Go, wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing, and his neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, others said no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, Yes, I am the same one. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. There are so, so, so many things in this scripture that we can talk about. We can literally spend a whole day <laughs> on these few verses. But there are just a few points I want to I want to make. The first point is in verse 3. It says the, the, the disciples ask in verse 3, they say, why was this man so unfortunate? Why does he have so many challenges and difficulties in his life? Why was he born blind? Is it because of his sins or is it because of his parents' sins? And Jesus said something profound. He said, this man is not in this condition because of his sins or his parents' sins. He said, but this happened to him so that the power of God could be seen in him. You see, the Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are called according to his good purpose. Okay? Now, you see, the truth is, as we go through life, there are so many difficult seasons that we'll pass through. 
And the assignment of the difficult seasons is not to make us to give up. It's not, it's not to, to discourage us. And we don't pass through those difficult seasons just because God is not faithful or God does not love us or, you know, maybe we are worse than other people. No, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Any difficult season you pass through is a potential to bring God glory. Okay? There is a, there is a path that you can take in the Spirit that can take every trial into a testimony. There is a path. There is a wisdom that you can use by the Holy Spirit that can transform every difficult situation into a situation that brings glory uh, to the name of the Lord. That's the first lesson that we need to learn. So, and we must not compare ourselves to people. You know, you look at this man, for example, his, his, his case seemed out of the ordinary. He seemed, uh, you know, absurd. You know, it's not like other people. You know, other people come and they, it seems as if they find it easy. You know, and maybe you are here. And you are like, oh, why, why is my life always hard? Why, why do I have to always go through the hard, you know, roads to get to wherever I want to get to? Why can't it be easy for me like it's for others? First of all, don't compare yourself to anybody. Second of all, any difficult situation you ever pass through, it has the potential to bring glory to the name of God. All you have to do is find out what God will have you to do to come out of that situation. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, there are so many points, like I said here, that I'm not going to go into. But the point I want to make is in verse 7. He said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation, sent. He said, He went his way, therefore, and washed and came back saying. You see, when we are studying the scriptures, we need to allow the Holy Ghost to journey with our minds. Just think about this for a second. Jesus is talking to a blind man. A blind man that was born blind. He had never seen in his life. He doesn't even know what the pool of Siloam looks like. He had never seen it. Okay, he has no experience of how to navigate his way there. And Jesus is telling him to do something seemingly impossible. He was blind. How do you tell a blind man to go and locate a very specific pool and to wash his eyes? Like, it, it, it sounded like a very ridiculous instruction. It sounded like a very difficult thing to do. But you see, if you are going to fulfill purpose and destiny, and if you are going to, if you are going to break through in life, you must be willing to pay the price to do whatever it takes for you to get to your next level. If this man had given excuses, and that's what many of us do, God gives you an instruction to do something and you look for a thousand and one excuses why that thing is not convenient for you to do. Guess what? It was not convenient for a blind man to locate a very specific pool in order to receive his sight. It wasn't convenient for him. It was difficult for him. He had to rely on other people. He had to beg other people to help him locate the pool and hope that they lead him to the right pool. Because if he had gone to the wrong pool, he wouldn't have received this miracle. Okay? He had to hope on other people and uh, hope that they bring him to the, to the right pool so that he can wash his eyes. He didn't even know how long the journey was going to take. He didn't know how long the distance was between where he was and the pool. He had none of that information. But you see, when there is desire, when there is passion, when there is determination and, and diligence, there is no obstacle that can stand in your way. When you are ready to pay the price, to do whatever it takes under God, to accomplish your purpose and destiny, they assure you there is no power on, in heaven and on earth that has a capacity to stop you or prevent you from getting to the goal that you are set in mind. That was the, the mystery revealed to us. In the book of Genesis, I believe in chapter 5, you know, when they were building, building the Tower of Babel, and God said, look at what men have begun to do. He said, because of what they have imagined to do and their unity and their determination, he said, there is nothing that will restrain them from accomplishing what they have set their heart to do. So think about it for a moment. Do you set your heart to anything? Is there anything you are passionate about? Is there, have you ever poured out yourself into doing anything? Or do you just do it, do everything just to get by, just put in my minimum effort, minimum performance, and hope to get the best result? That's not the way life works. You don't put in minimum effort. You don't put in the minimum performance. You don't put in the list of your abilities, the list of, of what you can do and expect to get <laughs> a million fold returns. That's not the way the world works. If you want to get the best, you have to be willing to put in the work, put in the time, put in the energy, you put in everything required to get to the destination that you desire. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now look at this. When he received this miracle, the other people around him now saw him and said, is this not the guy that was blind that used to beg on the street? He said, no. Some people said, no, it is not him. Some other people said, he's like him. He said, no, I am the one. That's how much his life changed radically overnight. And that's how your life also can change overnight if only you are willing to press and to push and to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit and do whatever he asks you to do. Remember what Mary told 
You know, those servants in John chapter 3 at the, at the, uh, the, the, the miracle of uh, turning the water into wine in Galilee. He said, whatsoever he says you should do, do it. It's that simple. What has God told you to do since the beginning of this year? How many of them have you done? What has God told you to do since last year? How many of them have you done? As long as you keep maintaining that attitude and that lifestyle that never obeys God and never pushes forward to accomplish, you know, important things, you will never really be able to know and you, your chances of really fulfilling your purpose is very, very slim. I pray God will help us and a change will come into our lives tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, because of time, I'll just go straight into uh, the price that we need to pay in order to accomplish or to, to enjoy and witness a glorious destiny. What is the price? What are the price or the prices that we must pay? Number one, the first price to pay is the price of alignment with God. The price of alignment with with God. Before I explain that, I have a quote here. Decision plus action plus the help of the Holy Spirit equals a glorious destiny. If you are writing, you may want to write that down. Decision plus action plus the help of the Holy Spirit equals a glorious destiny. I suppose that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You decide. Where do I want to be? This is December 2022. Where do you want to be December 2023? You don't plan for the new year when the year has started. <laughs> but if you, if you are planning for the new year after the year has started, in most cases, you, are, you have already come late. Because the truth of the matter is, many people have gone ahead of you. They have already started actualizing what will happen in 2023, even from now in December. Okay? You have to decide, what do I want to accomplish? What do I want my life to look like in 2023? Spiritually, academically, financially, in every aspect. What, what, my, what are my goals? What do I want to accomplish in 2023? Then the next question is, how do I get there? And then you begin to put in the work. You ask where action comes in. So you make the decision. You take the necessary steps. And then you ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. And once those three things are in, in place, your glorious destiny cannot be stopped. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So back to the price. What price must we pay? Number one is the price of alignment with God. If you were not here when we did the cost of alignment with God, it's a teaching I did uh, a few months ago. Please go to our YouTube channel. The title of the message is the cost of alignment with God. Please go listen to that teaching. It is very, very, very important. But for today, I'll just make a few points. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 look at this it says come unto me and are all ye that labor it says and are heavy laden and i will give you rest verse 29 says take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls now do you know what this is saying he's saying if you are tired of your current level you are tired of status quo you are tired of the way your life is going you know we, we usually quote this scripture you know, for evangelism, maybe when you're trying to preach to people to get them to become born again. But it goes way beyond that. He didn't say, come unto me, sinners. No. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. These are not necessarily sinful people. These are just people who are working, but the kind of results they are getting from their work is not commensurate to the effort they are putting in. The kind of results they are getting, they are not at the level they hope to get to. These are people who are struggling on the same level, who are stuck on the same level for long, and they are looking for a better life. They are saying, no, I know there can be more in God. I know I can be more than this. I know my life can be better than this. There are people who are not satisfied with their current level. These are the people that Jesus is inviting. And he says the key to move to your next level is to take my yoke upon you. What that means, you know, when, if you are familiar with ancient agricultural practices, the way farmers plow their fields, you know, to make ridges and all of that is that they use animals, okay? They attach two animals together and they put a, a, a plowing instrument behind them. So, but what they use to connect both animals together, you know, is called a yoke. So that yoke is like a wooden structure that fits into the neck of one animal and then connects into the neck of the other animal. It's not so tight that it will hurt the animal. It has more than enough room, you know, to allow the animal to be able to turn its neck comfortably. But it serves to keep the two animals on the same level, to keep them on the same pace. And that is what Jesus Christ is saying here. He says, if you want to live where you are right now and you want to move to the next level of your life, the next level of your destiny, he says, you cannot do it without me. You have to... Take my yoke upon you so that you and I can be on the same page. 
so that you and I can be on the same pace, so that you and I can be on the same level, so that you and I can be on the same terms. And that is something we really need to think about. Am I on the same level with Jesus? Am I on the same frequency with Jesus? Am I on the same pace? Am I keeping pace with Jesus? Or am I just trying to use Jesus to accomplish something? A personal agenda, a personal goal. We don't use God to accomplish our own ambitions. No. We stay with God and we do what he wants us to do. We move at his pace. The implication of taking the yoke of Christ on you is that you can only move at his pace. You can't run faster than him. If you try to run faster, the yoke will pull you back. Okay? You are under control. If you try to move too slow, as he's moving faster, he will pull you forward. That is what it means to carry the yoke of Christ. You are keeping pace with him. When he tells you sit down, you sit. When he tells you get up, you get up. When he tells you do this, you do it. You see, when we when we receive grace and we begin to keep pace with God and we begin to obey God, you see, there's, there's something I like to say. You don't need too much experience to succeed in life. No, you don't. You don't need exp experience per se to, to fulfill your purpose, to fulfill your destiny. No, all you need is alignment with God. That's all you need. You see, the Holy Spirit has all of the experience you need. You know, it's just like, um, um, I don't think there's anybody here who can go to any city in the US without the help of a GPS. Uh, well, if you are here, you can indicate you must be a superhuman, <laughs> that you know your way, you know the way to any place in the US without using GPS. <laughs> you must be special indeed. You see, the reason why you don't worry about it, if somebody says come to Wisconsin, for example, now, the reason why you are not worried is because you know all you have to do is type in the address into the GPS. And you will get there. It doesn't matter whether you've been there before or not. That is exactly how life is. The Holy Spirit is our GPS. You don't need that much information. You don't need that all that experience. You don't. You have the Holy Spirit to help you, to guide you. That's the assignment of the Holy Spirit. He says when he, the Spirit of truth, is God, come, he will guide you into all truth. That's his assignment. It's your GPS. It's your navigator. So that's why all you need is just to be on the same level with him, be on the same pace with him, be in alignment with him. Once you can accomplish that, you don't have to worry about anything. See, your life will just be moving from one chapter of glory to the other. People will look at you and say, why, why, how, how are you doing it? How is it that you always get everything spot on? You always avoid nasty mistakes that brings other people down? It is not because you are wise in yourself. It is because you have leveraged the wisdom and the experience and the all-knowing capacity of the Holy Spirit. So alignment with God is very, very critical. You have to be on the same level with God at all times. Now, how do we accomplish alignment with God? Number one way is to pray consistently. Pray consistently. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. You see, um, 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 there's, a, there's a saying that goes, it says, um, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable, right? You see, the reason why, in my own opinion, the reason why many people don't pray is because they don't know what they get by praying. <laughs> in my own opinion, that's just what I believe. Because if you understand what happens to you every time you pray, you will not need motivation to pray, okay? When you know what happens to you every time you pray, you know what you stand to gain by praying. You are not doing God a favor by praying. Anytime you pray, you are not doing God a favor. You are doing yourself a favor. Okay? Because what prayer does, the primary thing prayer does is that it changes you to become like Jesus. And in the process of that change, what it does is that it, it, it activates your spiritual senses. It quickens. It's just like, you know, when you are maybe you are in, the, you are in the, your car, you are trying to pick a particular channel, and you are trying to fine tune the channel, you are trying to, you know, just tune the channel, you are going, you know, maybe you're on 88.0, you are trying to get to 89, and you are going maybe 0 0.1 at a time, and you are going, you are pressing until you hit 89. Once you hit 89, you, you connect to the channel, you are able to listen to the music, you are able to listen to the, you know, the program, the podcast, whatever it is you wanted to listen to. That is exactly how it is also in the spirit. You see, God is on a frequency. <laughs> and if you don't arrive at that frequency, you can't hear his voice. So the way you, you fine tune your spiritual antenna to get to that frequency where God speaks is by praying. So praying, that's why the Bible says, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue edifies himself. You are edifying, you are charging yourself. You are charging yourself. You, are, you know, it's just like a, a, a battery when you have your phone battery. You, your battery can only last so long without a charge. If you want your battery to keep getting, you know, getting renewed, you have to keep charging it consistently. When you pray, you are charging your spirit. And when your spirit is charged, it, has, it finds it easier to pick God's frequency. It finds it easier to hear God. It finds it easier to communicate what God is saying to you. So that's why we pray. 
So when you pray consistently, your spiritual antenna is, is, is fine-tuned and it's very, very easy for you to hear God. And when you can hear God consistently, it's easy to stay in alignment with God because you know what God wants you to do, you know when He wants you to do it, you know how He wants you to do it, and you know when He wants you to stop doing it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The number two way we achieve alignment with God is by fasting often. Fasting often. You see, I know this is something many people will not like to hear. <laughs> but you see, if you want to grow and you really want to know God, you really want to accomplish your purpose, you really want to live a meaningful and impactful life, you must submit to the word of God. Let's look at the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Daniel, oh, I love this man so much. He's, he's, he's such, such an amazing personality. Daniel, chapter 10. Let's look at verse 2. It says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. And it says, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh or wine into my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. This guy was fasting and praying for 21 solid days. Let's look at what happened at the end of, at the, end of the exercise. Verse 12, he says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou hast set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come to, for thy words. He says, For the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me, and 20 days, but lo, Michael, one of the princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now, verse 14 is where I'm going. He says, Now I have come to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter days. He said, For the for yet the vision is for many days. So he said he came, an angel got out to dispatch an angel from heaven to come and give this guy classified information because he was pressing in prayer and fasting. There is a limit that your prayer alone can go. That's what Jesus told us. He said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. There are certain realms in the spirit you can never touch, you can never enter, until you become somebody who fasts consistently. And when I say fast consistently, please, I don't mean <laughs> fast for 30 days in a, <laughs> in a month, no. You know, if, if the Holy Spirit gives you that instruction, that's fine. You know, you can fast, you can fast. If you want to fast for 30 days consistently, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is set a time that you'll be eating per day. Okay, if you are going to be eating maybe 8 a.m. every day, keep it there, you know, consistent. You can eat once a day, you can eat twice a day, you can eat at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and just fast, you know, during the day. The, the important thing is you are getting adequate nutrients into your body. So it's possible to fast that way for 30 days, for 60 days, for 90 days. And, you know, you can eat once or twice a day and just use the remaining parts to wait on the Lord, to pray, to study, to meditate on God's word and all of that. You know, but if you want to do full fasting where you fast the whole day, please one day, two days, <laughs> break your fast, you know, except you receive an express, express instruction from the Holy Spirit, you know, to go for longer periods. But the point is, without fasting, there are certain realms in the spirit you will never be able to touch. There are certain classified information you will never be able to access because there is a certain level of discipline and sacrifice that is needed to enter into certain realms in, you know, in the things of God. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Number three, how do we achieve alignment with God? It is by consistently meditating on God's word. Consistently meditate on God's word. Let's look at the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 in verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. It says, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You see, the word of God, meditation now on the word of God is a very, very powerful tool. It's a powerful tool that can help you to know the things that can take you to the next level. You see, as I'm still going to be discussing in a bit more detail, one of the ways we prosper is through knowledge. In fact, knowledge is the key to prosperity. Okay? And the way you access spiritual knowledge primarily is by staying on the Word of God. When you stay on the Word of God and you are meditating on it, you are meditating on it, Lord, I want to know. I want to know what is your will for me. Lord, I want to know what is the secret to this challenge. What is the secret to this level? What is the secret to my next level? And there are several ways to study the Word of God. By the way, you can study the Word of God topically. That means you can pick a topic you want to study per time. Maybe you want to study on faith. 
for example. You can just go to Google, 20 scriptures on faith. You can meditate on those. You want to study about healing. You want to study about finances. You want to study about any, anything at all, any topic at all you have. There are scriptures you know that you can that you can meditate. And there are people, there are case studies you can follow. If you want to learn about, you want to receive the dimension of the spirit of wisdom, for example, the people to study are Joseph and Daniel, not even Solomon. Okay, because eventually the wisdom of Solomon was corrupted. Okay, but if you want to learn the mysteries of spiritual wisdom according to the ways of God, the one that comes from above, the people to study are Daniel and Joseph. Okay, you want to learn that there are so many people, so many case studies you can study, or you can just go from chapter to chapter, just you know, trying to understand what the Spirit of God will have you to know. But the key is consistently meditate on the Word of God. When you meditate on God's Word enough, you are storing up, you are fueling your spirit, and the Holy Spirit can just speak a word at any time because you have meditated on it and it has entered your spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit can now pick a word and use that word to speak to you. And that word will just come. That's what we call Rema, the Rema word, the word that proceeds from the mouth of God to you. So meditating consistently on God's words is one of the ways you can achieve alignment with God. The number four way is to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit consistently. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit consistently. If you disobey God today, you'll find it more difficult to hear God tomorrow. If you disobey God tomorrow, it will be more difficult the next day for you to hear him. But when you want, to, if you want the word of God, the voice of God to become louder and louder in your spirit and in your vessel, the key is to obey him in the little things. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Look at this. It says, And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, he says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken, to listen, is better than the fat of rams. God cherishes obedience. God does not commit himself to people who disobey him. That's just the way it works. Just like you would not commit yourself to somebody who doesn't take you seriously. Okay? God does not commit himself to people. He does not show... He does not if God is going to come with you and discuss weighty matters, he's not going to come to somebody who does not take him seriously. He's not going to come to somebody who does not obey him, somebody who does not obey even the simple instructions. Preach to this person, you don't. Oh, wake up by midnight and pray, you don't. Oh, tomorrow I want you to fast, you don't. Every single instruction <laughs> you, you will never obey. You will not really be able to gain access to the deeper matters of the kingdom, and it will be very difficult for you to hear the voice of God repeatedly, which is what we actually keep you in alignment with God. You See those instructions that the Holy Spirit is actually giving you, obedience to those instructions are the things that will actually keep you on the same level, on the same pace, on the same page with God. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So all of that is talking about alignment with God. That's the first price to pay. The second price to pay is productivity and time management. Productivity and time management. Now this is something that many, many people take for granted, but you see, it is absolutely critical. If you are not productive, you do not know how to manage time, you can forget about fulfilling purpose, you can forget completely about a glorious destiny. Look at John chapter 9 where we read. You, do you believe that the 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 <laughs> this is powerful? You see, the whole reason why that man that was born blind, the only reason he was born blind. You know, Jesus said the reason was because uh, he wanted the power of God to be shown in him. But you see, the only mystery Jesus is trying to reveal here, the central theme that Jesus is trying to teach is time management. That's all. Time management and productivity. That was the reason why that man was born blind. And I will, I will show you what I'm saying. Look at John chapter 9, verse, um, verse 3. He says, It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened to him so that the power of God could be seen in him. Now, this is the context of that conversation. Now, look at verse 4. He says, we must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. Take note of that word, sent. He says, the night is coming, and then no one can work. Do you see that? So, Jesus is saying, oh, he wasn't born blind because he's a sinner. He was born blind because I want the power of God to be shown in him. Now, what Jesus is referring to as the power of God is explaining further now. He says, we must quickly, the reason this one was born blind is because I want to teach you something. And that, this is the lesson. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. Proceed further. Look at verse 5. He says, but while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse 6. He says, then he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. And then he told him, go. Wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. Remember verse 4? He says, 
we must quickly carry out the task of the one who sent us. So, the same mystery Jesus is trying to reveal in verse 4, he now practically demonstrated it with a live example. He now sent him to the pool of Siloam. The reason he sent him to the pool of Siloam is because Siloam means saint and he's trying to teach his disciples the kind of attitude you should have when you are saint on an errand, when you are given a task to do. He says, so the man went and washed and came back saying, now if that man had not gone promptly during the day, while there were people around that could lead him, if he had waited and he delayed and he dilly-dallied, and said, okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, that man would have died blind. Because you see, that his miracle was time-bound. It was time-bound. It was sensitive to his prompt obedience. And this was the mystery that Jesus was trying to teach. That you have to be productive when you are given a task to do. See it, see that task as something that God gave you to do. And when you see it that way, you now go a step further by doing it urgently and quickly. Be productive and learn how to manage your time well. The Bible says, redeeming the time for the days are evil. You see, the reason why time management is so critical is because the unit of destiny is time. Okay? Destiny is just an accumulation of time. So, let's say you, 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 are, you are destined to live for 70 years, for example, and now maybe you are 20 years already. You see, 20 years is already gone. And 20 years is an accumulation of one day plus another day plus another day to make a year, to make another year until you became 20 years old. Right? In the same way, because the devil knows this, what he now does is that he seeks to make you unproductive so that he can waste one day and then another day, and then another day, and then another day, until it becomes a month, until it becomes a year, until it becomes two years, and five years, and ten years, and twenty years, you will think, oh, it's just one day, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do this tax tomorrow, I'll be serious tomorrow, I'll be serious next week, it's no big deal, let me just chill, let me just watch Netflix, let me just relax, let me just have fun, let me just watch this video, it's just this video, it's just that video, it's just this video game, and it's just, it's just one day, it's just one week, it's just one month, it's no big deal, it's just one year, guess what, Satan knows what he's doing, he's wasting your life, one day at a time because destiny is measured in time and jesus christ knew that this mystery was so critical that he, he, he refused to give a man eyes from heaven so that he can teach us in time the importance of productivity and time management so if you have not yet taken productivity seriously if it has not yet occurred to you that the the your destiny depends exclusively on your ability to be productive in all things spiritually Productivity covers everything. Spiritual productivity. Now, what, what productivity simply means is setting a goal and accomplishing the goal. I don't care what the goal is. So if your goal is to pray every day for two hours, I'm going to pray every day from two hours from today, and you set the time from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. To, to, to 8 p.m. And you stick to it every day. You are being spiritually productive. Forget about the end result. Those things will come naturally. Okay? If your, your, your goal is, okay, because I want to become an excellent student, I'm going to study for two hours every day. That's the goal. And you stick to it every day. You study two hours every day. You are being productive every day. And you are learning how to manage time every day. And that is a critical requirement for being able to fulfill purpose and destiny. Productivity and time management. I pray God will truly help us and give us understanding in Jesus' name. I, I, I did a teaching you know, a few weeks ago when we were doing our spiritual warfare series, the part two of that series is the goal, the goal of Satan's attacks. Please, if you have not listened to that teaching, it's on our YouTube channel, go and listen to it. We really looked at John chapter 10 verse 10 in that study, where the Bible says, the thief coming up but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I said during that teaching that the primary thing Satan wants to destroy is not your car, it's not your resources, it's not your money, it's not all of that. The primary thing he wants to destroy is your life your life and the way satan ruins the lives of people is not just by bringing sickness and demonic attacks and all of that the principal way he does it is by getting them to waste time because life is summed up in time we are in time the life the sum of a man's life is called his lifetime so the way satan destroys people is by getting them to waste their time thinking that they have more of it meanwhile time is the only most valuable asset that we have in life and it is limited in supply you don't have all the time in the world that was why Jesus said, I must work the works of things that sent me. We must quickly carry out the task assigned to us by the one who sent us. Because the night is coming when no man can walk. And that was the, what he was trying to reveal in the story of that man that was born blind. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Finally, get knowledge. 
are talking about the price to pay for a glorious destiny. We said number one is the cost, the price of alignment with God. The second price is productivity and time management. And the third price is getting knowledge. Getting knowledge. This is powerful. Look at Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. There from verse... Three, Proverbs 24 verse 3. This is a very, very powerful scripture. Look at this. It says, True wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. Verse 4. It says, And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Do you know what this is saying? He's saying, if you if what you are trying to do is to build, what you need is wisdom. If you have built something, you are trying to get it to be self-sustaining. You are trying to get it to be established. What you need is understanding. He says, well, if what you are looking for is prosperity, right? He says, what you need is knowledge. And this is a very, very powerful mystery that we must have. Because many of us will say, oh, I want to be rich. I want to be prosperous. I want to be successful. You know, this and that. And we completely ignore knowledge. You see, the key to prosperity is not hustling. The key to prosperity is not looking for more jobs. The key to prosperity is not taking on additional shifts. No, the key is knowledge. There is a knowledge you will have that will cause things to come to you. There is a knowledge you will have that will cause precious things to come to you. It is that powerful. So if you want to prosper, if what you are looking for is prosperity, what you need is knowledge. And you see, there is no way you can you're, you're, you, you'll be able to accomplish a glorious destiny without some measure of prosperity. And when I'm saying prosperity, I'm not just talking about money. Prosperity is multidimensional. There is prosperity of the soul, prosperity of the spirit, prosperity of the body. It's multidimensional. So you are, you, there is spiritual prosperity. If you want to prosper spiritually, the key is knowledge. There is solical prosperity, mental prosperity. If you want to pr prosper in your mind, the key is still knowledge. There is physical prosperity. If you want to prosper in your body, you want to be healthy and sound, the key is still knowledge. Because if you don't know the things you ought to eat, the things you ought not to eat, when to eat, when not to eat, when to exercise, when not to exercise, the things to do to keep your body healthy, you can pray all you want. There is a measure of health you still will not be able to step into, even with divine healing. Because you see, the way divine healing works, divine healing is not in the is not independent of our natural living. No. You see, the, the things we expose our body to in the natural has the capacity to reduce our lifespan, even when divine healing is in place. You can pray to God today and then the power of God comes on you and then you are supernaturally healed. But you see that healing that came on you did not reverse your years that is that you have caught short. If somebody is smoking, for example, and he smokes, you know, cigarettes, he drinks drug, alcohol, he takes drugs, does all kinds of things, takes all kinds of junk into his body. You see, even when divine healing comes, divine healing may bring you temporary solution, but it will not extend your lifespan. Because you have deteriorated your body to such to, 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 to an extent, there is, your, your overall years is still coming down. It has still come. You see, have you have you considered boxers? You know boxers who, you know the box, they are really strong, they really box during their youth and their early years. You know, I was watching a video of Moana that lived some time ago when he was older and he was shaking, he was vibrating, he could barely coordinate himself. Why? Because the level of rigor he had ex exposed his body to in his earlier years had cut short the, 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 the longevity of his life. That is exactly how it is. So knowledge is the key to prosperity. Any kind of prosperity you are looking for, whether it is financial, whether it is spiritual, whether it is academic, there is a dimension of knowledge that will bring it to you. You want to succeed in business. You cannot just do it by prayer. You can God is faithful. God is just. God is, is a God of favor. But God also is a God of justice. God is not going to reward you when you are lazy. You want to be a, a, a you want to, to, to start a conglomerate. You want to run a business that will have branches all over the world. You can it's not just by prayer. There is a measure of knowledge you must have. There is something you must know about business administration. There is something you must know about product, about quality control, about how to how to how to how to handle customers. There is there, there are just so many things that you have to know. There is a system that must be in place to sustain that continuity. So knowledge is critical. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. You see, the reason why all of these things, why I'm so happy, you know, that God is bringing this to us tonight is because there is nothing here, all of these points we have made, there are things that we can control. There are things that you can do. In other words, today you can decide, I am going to have a glorious destiny. How? Number one, I'm going to ensure that I'm always in alignment with God. And it's within your power to do. 
It's within your power to do. It's within your power to pray consistently. It's within your power to study the Bible consistently. It's within your power to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's within your power to, to, to fast consistently. All of these things are things you can do. It's within your power to decide to be productive and to become conscious of your time. It's within your power to go for knowledge, to read books, to study. All of these things are things you can control. And when you do these things, you can be guaranteed that ultimately and eventually your destiny will undoubtedly be glorious. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Can we just go to the Lord in prayer? Just commit ourselves to the Lord and say, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that has come to me. But Lord, I ask for grace. I ask for grace to do. I ask for grace to do. Give me grace, O oh God. Give me grace, O oh God, to stay in alignment with you on a consistent basis. Give me grace, O oh God, to fast often. Give me grace, O oh God, to study the word, to meditate on your word day and night. Give me grace, O oh God, to pray consistently. Give me grace, O oh God, to stay in alignment with you. Give me grace, O oh God, to go for knowledge, to study, to study, to eliminate ignorance in my life. Give me the grace to study, to do research, to study, to meditate, to watch videos, to, 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 to gain knowledge regarding the things I want to do. You cannot say, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to become a preacher, I want to become a singer, and there is no knowledge. No, there is a measure of knowledge that makes you competent. Father, give me the grace to go for knowledge. Give me the grace to be consistent. Give me the grace to do the things I need to do so that I can accomplish this glorious destiny, so that I can become the person you created me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Tell the Lord, give me grace. You cannot do it by your power. You cannot do it just by your strength. The energy to do these things is supplied by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that wills and does. He is the one that gives us the power to do. He is the one that tells us what to do and is the one that empowers us to do the things he has said we should do. You want to pray and say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace to be consistent to God in doing the little things, even when I don't see the results. Even when I don't see the results immediately, give me the grace to keep pushing. Give me grace to keep pressing. Give me grace to keep moving and to be to be productive and to manage my time. To be productive and to manage my time well. I am tired of wasting my life. I'm tired of wasting time. Give me grace to be productive, to eliminate distractions out of my life, to focus on the things that really matter so that I can be, I can, I can move on in that. I can move with maximum efficiency and fulfill the reason for my existence. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want to give opportunity to anyone who may want to accept Jesus as their Lord tonight or you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Wherever you are, can you just place your hand on your chest and just say this simple prayer after me. Just tell him, Lord Jesus, I recognize myself as a sinner and I know I cannot save myself. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Come into my heart. Become my Lord and my Savior. From this day, I receive the grace to go and to sin no more. Thank you, Jesus, because you have saved me. Give me the power to live for you and you alone for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for your word that you have sent to us. Father, I pray first of all for those who have decided to accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray as you promised in your word that you accept them, you come into their heart and you release the life of God within them in the name of Jesus. The grace they need to walk with you to please you all the days of their lives. Father, I pray you release in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for every single one of us, Lord, as you have admonished and charged us tonight, the grace we need to live a purpose-driven life, to stay in alignment with you, to, 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 to be productive and to manage our times well. The grace to go for knowledge so that through all these things we can accomplish a glorious destiny father i pray you release into our lives in jesus name help us to be the people you created us to be in the mighty name of jesus lord i pray as we go into this week let your hand be on us keep us from all evil in the name of jesus i pray for those writing exams in the name of jesus you will succeed in the name of jesus you will prosper in the name of jesus you will not fail the hand of the lord will be upon you receive the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge in the name of jesus the lord grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that in everything that pertains to everybody associated with this fellowship, Father, I pray that you perfect in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us a new song and give us reasons to continually rejoice. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.